What's up everyone, back for another beer review, and today is another installment of Macro Monday here on the channel, where I review a beer from a macro brewery or a macro-esque beer from a craft brewery. And the beer I'm reviewing today, once again, comes from Anheuser-Busch, and they're headquartered in St. Louis, Missouri. And this is their Budweiser. So this is an American adjunct lager that comes in at 5% alcohol by volume, 12 IBUs at the time of review. I don't know exactly how old this can is, but it does have a Best Buy date of April 16th of 2024. We're about just over two and a half months away from that date. So according to the brewery, we should be good to go. So it's been a couple months since I've done a Macro Monday on the channel with the holidays and whatnot. I didn't pick up any uh, Macro beer or Macro-esque beer to review. So it's back after a couple month uh, hiatus and we're doing the king of beers because this beer has actually been uh, recommended to me and suggested that I give it a go for Macro Monday by a couple different viewers of the channel. So I thought I would give it a go and I saw this big can when I was at the grocery store a couple days ago and I'm like, that would be perfect to a review. Now, if you're watching this review, there's a high probability that you've already had this one before in your life, especially if you live here in America. Um, I've had this beer too many times to count, but I will be honest with you. So full disclosure, when it comes to this beer, it's not one of my favorite macro lagers. In fact, it's probably towards the bottom of the list. It's just never really resonated with me. It's just something about the taste, but you know, I want to let you know that uh, as we go into this review, so you kind of know where I'm coming from. But like I do all beer reviews on my channel, I'm going to give it a fair shake. I'm going to give it a fair review, and I'm going to uh, let you know uh, how this one is to my palate right now as we speak and not bring um, you know past history into the review. So let's crack this one open, get in the glass, and I will say that there's probably somewhere around an 88.3% probability that uh, I spill some of this big. I think this is a, tw is this a 24, uh, oh, this is 25 fluid ounce a can, so they give you an extra ounce. I'm probably going to duff the pour, uh, I would imagine because I just suck with these uh, huge pours whether it's this or like 32 ounce uh, crowlers they go everywhere on me it's, it's ridiculous uh, so hopefully not we'll see but if so I got some uh, paper towels to clean it up now when it comes to uh, Budweiser uh, itself right we'll do it a little bit more aggressive I've some people have told me with the you know macros to pour them a little bit more aggressive so that's what we're gonna do and I think they're right so I didn't spill it everywhere so kudos to me um, but anyway we're gonna throw this over here now when it comes to Budweiser the one thing they're known for, uh, as opposed to the vast majority of the other uh, American adjunct lagers and macro lagers out there, they use rice in their beer uh, as opposed to corn for the adjunct. Um, they also do the beechwood age processing, which really doesn't impart any flavor or anything. It's just a way to kind of uh, filter the beer and whatnot. So anyway, that pours out exactly <laughs> how you'd expect it to. Has that, you know, light yellow uh, straw color, very vibrant in the glass. It's almost glowing. On camera, it's gonna probably look a little bit more dull, but in person, it's just very light looking. The clarity's through the roof because it's a lager and it should look like this. Um, has almost a finger of a bright white soap sudsy looking head, hold it up to the light. And yeah, I mean, this looks like picture perfect when it comes to a beer. Um, you know, just a beer, you know, no specific style. Just, hey, give me a beer. This is what it looks like. So anyway, let's uh, get a, a nose on this one. All right, it doesn't smell too bad. Very sweet smelling. Um, it has like this this sweet almost, I don't know why I'm saying this about Budweiser, but hey, like I said, gonna be fair, honest, and let you know what I smell. It has a sweet, grainy uh, malt character, but I'm also picking them up maybe a little bit of honey. Like it has like a sweeter kind of note to it. Maybe a touch of that, uh, you know, sulfur, aka a lager funk, just a very small, minute amount. Touch of grassiness, maybe from the hops. A lot of times with these adjunct lagers, I really don't pick up any hops, but they're a little bit. I mean, this actually smells better than I remember it. Eh? You know what's funny with the with Macro Mondays and me uh, reviewing a lot of these macro beers that I've had before, but never really sat down and like reviewed like this. I'm realizing that a lot of them are very inoffensive to my palate, and I get why a lot of people do enjoy certain macro lagers. There's still some that I don't enjoy. Like I reviewed Rolling Rock, and I had a whole spiel and story about it. Still don't like that one. And I've had a lot of people, um, you know, comment on that one about it's their favorite stuff. And that's the beauty about beer. We all have different opinions and, you know, uh, different likes and dislikes and whatnot. I've never really liked this one. There's always something about it. But in the aroma here, I, I would lie. I'd be lying to you if I said, oh, it smells terrible or gross or not. That smells fine. It smells like a sweet, grainy uh, macro lager. That's what it smells like. 
Now they use the rice, they say, to have more of like a crisp um, uh, mouthfeel and a like a cleaner finish. We'll see. Yeah, it doesn't smell bad in the least. Let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. <laughs> it's all right. So the flavor is a little bit more concerning to my palate. It's not like terrible or drain pour esque but there's something on the finish that's throwing it off just slightly. I don't know what that is. Let's go body mouth, y'all. Behind this is nice. 5%, this is like lower side of medium, approaching medium. Um, it has a little bit more heft than say like a Bud Light or, or you know, Miller Light or Coors Light. And you can tell. Maybe if you're drinking a lot of uh, these, maybe that you know might steer you in the wrong direction because you don't want it to weigh down your palate. Not to say this is like heavy or anything, but for a 5% macro lager, it's a bit heavy. The mouthfeel, yeah, it's super crisp. It, it really is. Yeah, it's, it's nice and crisp. Um, it's smooth overall. Mouthfeel is nice. The taste. This reminds me a lot of uh, Bush, which makes sense. Anheuser Busch. They brew this, Bush, uh, Bush Light, Bud Light, the whole nine. And what I mean by that is, I said in that Bush review, it, that might be one of the most flavorless <laughs> macro lagers I've ever had. Like it was devoid of most flavor. There was nothing bad about it. There's nothing good about it. It was like almost drinking like alcoholic water, but you really didn't know it. Like it was a little bit of like a like a like a corn water, right? And that's pretty much it. This no corn in here, um, rice, but it's just very mild and subdued flavor wise right the forefront maybe a little bit of sweet grain maybe an underlying touch of that like honey i was talking about but not exactly um as it passes through the palate that kind of flavor rides out and on the finish i get um, I like a, a skosh a skosh of like a grassy hop note this doesn't have much bitterness at all it has a nice dryness it's like semi semi dry um, it's not overly sweet, so it's a good balance between the the you know the malt sweetness and then the dryness on the back of the palate. It just doesn't have a lot going on for it, uh, you know. It, it just doesn't. And there's a there's a little bit of a, again, and I, and I mentioned it right at that first sip. There's something on the finish. I can't really pinpoint it. A slight. It's not an off flavor in terms of like this is brewed and properly and it's a brewing fault. It's just something about the beer. There's a something on the finish that kind of almost like it might be. I don't know. It's like a slight boiled vegetable thing. And I know that can be an off flavor in beers. Um, again, this can, this can, as far as I know, has been kept cold. I got it out of a cooler. You know, it's um, you know, it's it's way before the Best Buy date. Maybe that's what I was always tasting about Budweiser, which I didn't. You know, it stopped me from loving it, or shit, loving it. It's just stopping me from liking it or tolerating it. And I'm kind of getting this, um, I'm kind of getting that in this beer, uh, this specific can. One more sip. I, I don't know. I will say this. I know it sounds maybe crazy to some, but I think I like Bush better than this. Yeah, there's a little bit of like a, on the back of the pal too, a slight like cardboardy thing going on. Yeah, I'd say the finish isn't great on this, which just stops me from really enjoying it, um, you know, tolerating it. Uh, I don't really want to finish the rest of that can. I'm going to pour more into my glass, uh, but here's the thing. Went into it with an open mind, and after that first sip, I was kind of reminded why I'm not a huge fan of it. That finish, while not super off-putting, like, listen, if I had to drink this can, I could, and I wouldn't hate my life. I just don't want to, because I'm not enjoying the flavors here. Uh, the mouthfeel, the body, nice. Um, it's just that finish kind of throws it off. It, if that finish wasn't there, I'd kind of rate this close to Bush because I think it gave a Bush like a 3-2 or something like that. And again, to take that as a whole um, when it comes to reviewing beers, like a 3-2 for American Adjunct Lager, which is a style I don't love, is, you know, pretty high up there um, for me personally. Like once you start getting in like a 3-5 to 3-7-5 range, that's like some of my favorites. Um, as a whole, though, while this is not horrible, 
it's kind of right in line what I always remember this beer being, and that's not for me, which doesn't mean it's not for you. I'm sure there's a lot of people who will watch this review and be like, you're an idiot. Uh, Budweiser's the greatest fucking beer since sliced bread, and you're entitled to that opinion. If you like Budweiser, I'm not going to sit here and tell you you shouldn't, and hopefully you shouldn't tell me that I should like Budweiser when I don't. Um, but that's why I like doing these Macro Mondays, because I probably wouldn't ever review this beer outside of saying, hey, it's Macro Monday. Some folks want to see me review Budweiser. Here we are. So... That's why I did it. And again, the last time I had this one was like 2018, 19. And I think I gave it like a two out of five on untapped. I'm going to go a little higher here now because I do enjoy lagers as a whole more uh, in this day and age. But I don't think I can pass this one based on the fact that I just don't really enjoy it all that much. So a passing grade for me is 2.5 out of five and higher. So I'm going to give Budweiser, aka the king of beers, I'm going to give this a low two five and go 2.4 out of five. That's kind of where this lands for me. It's Budweiser. It's just not my jam. Um, and yeah, it is what it is. So, you know, like I said, there's going to be a lot of people who watch this review and just love this beer and others that are just like, this is vile and I don't ever want to drink it. I'm somewhere in between, but more towards the vile and I don't want to drink it uh, side of things. Again, it's not a bad beer. Uh, for what it is, I think there's going to be a lot of people who obviously this is their staple and hey, more power to you. So yeah, 2.4 out of 5 for Budweiser. Price point availability, I paid $2.50 for that can, and I did check 12 packs where I bought it at the grocery store, and it's gonna vary by a couple dollars, either lower or higher, but I think it was like 12 bucks for a 12 pack. Um, $16.99 for an 18 pack, and then a 24 pack, or sorry, 30 pack was uh, $24.99. Um, a little bit pricey, as, I mean, you know, prices nowadays are kind of crazy, in general, but for beer. Um, so I don't know how that compares to like your Coors Banquet and your Miller High Lifes and, and things of that nature. Um, but I found it a little bit pricey. I wouldn't buy this again for that price point. There's other beers uh, for that price that I would uh, definitely take like Jenny Cream Ale, for example. Definitely my jam more so than this. It's just, let me, one more sip. I just want to make sure, make sure I'm doing this, uh, not doing this beer a disservice. Yeah, no. That finish, it's like, once it hits my palate, I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then I swallow it, and it's like, yeah, no, it's not for me. So it's probably the last sip I'll take of this beer. Um, Two fifty for that can is not bad to try it, though. Anyway, uh, availability is Budweiser. You should see it everywhere in the U.S. Um, outside of the U.S. and other countries, I have no idea. So if you're outside of the country, let me know. Uh, do you see this one regularly? What's the, what's the price point? You know, if you're somewhere in Europe or maybe down in Australia, Sam, um, I'd be curious to know what... Uh, you know, people pay for this outside of the U.S., but um, yeah, I don't know. I always like the uh, the labeling of Budweiser. I mean, it's you know pretty simple and whatnot, but uh, I always I always enjoy it. And they have a spiel at the top. I'm not going to read. It. I mean, I'll probably post it in the comment or in the um, description box and whatnot. But anyway, if you've had this one before, and I'm sure most of you have, post in the comment section. Let me know what you think about this one. Um, if you do enjoy this one, why do you enjoy it? I'd like to hear you know what really makes this one for you. And if you hate it. Let me know why you dislike it. Like I said, I think everything's okay with this beer until the finish, and then the finish is like, nah, nah, not for me. Definitely throws it off, and that's why I give it for me. I can't give it a passing grade, and it is what it is. So we're done with another Macro Monday. I like to do these every three to four weeks, so uh, check back probably next month for another installment. I have a couple others on the list that I'll get to at some point. I just wanted to review this one because um, there's a couple folks on the channel that asked me to review this one months ago, and uh, here we are. And it's done, and I'm happy it is because no more Budweiser for this guy. Anyway, appreciate everybody. Oh, yeah, I have 5%. You can't really tell. I would say the body, the one negative to this beer, if you want a session, is I think the body's a little heavy for a 5% macro lager. Um, again, it's approaching medium body for me, and... I think if you drank a lot of them, you know, if you're if you're pounding them one after another, I think it might bog down, um, bog down the palate, which is why probably a lot of people enjoy uh, the lighter version of this and just light beers in general, where you could just you know it's like a step above water body wise. I think that's a little bit of a detriment for what you're probably looking for out of this beer. I don't mind it personally because I'm not going to be sessioning this beer, so just thought I would mention that. And five percent you can't taste. So appreciate everybody stopping by for another Macro Monday. To the next one. Cheers.